I love the idea of adding things. Well, that goes back to, would it be the tickle trunks? No, <laughs> that, that, that was from Mr. Dress Up. They're called hope chests. <laughs> There's too many. Mr. Too many kinds was, of trunks. For, yeah, too many trunks. So for those listening, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Dress Up was a Canadian kids show and his tickle trunk held his costumes. <laughs> I can't Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> wow, a tickle oh, trunk. That tickle is tr- it's slightly obscene. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i think my mom calls my dress up trunk the tickle trunk like yes from when i was growing up and that's why it's so very much a part of my <laughs> your vernacular <obviously>. it, yeah <laughs> wow yeah. that's embarrassing okay no that all was right. hilarious <laughs> all right Welcome back to the Modern Lady Podcast. You're listening to episode 93. Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Lindsay. And today we are talking about what it means to live well with some everyday luxuries. Fashion designer Carolina Herrera once said, quote, luxury will always be around no matter what happens in the world, end quote. Now, isn't that a comforting thought? But wait, what is luxury? For this, we turn to Herrera's fellow fashion designer, Hubert de Givenchy, who gives us the answer, quote, luxury is in each detail, end quote. How many details do we get to plan, edit, execute, and control in our day-to-day lives at home? If it's true that luxury is in each detail, then think of what this could mean for transforming our ordinary into the extraordinary without even needing to go beyond our own front door. But first, if you enjoy this episode of the Modern Lady Podcast, please take a minute to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. Your review can help the Modern Lady stand out so that others may find us too. Your comments mean the world to us. This week's shout out goes to You Know Who 123, who left us a five star rating and review on iTunes and said, quote, This podcast is my favorite way of keeping my mind engaged while I do mindless chores and crafts in the mornings. Michelle and Lindsay's conversations are always entertaining, but more importantly, very edifying. I got married this year, so we don't have any children yet, but I'm always taking mental notes from this podcast of how I will want to approach family life and homemaking when our family starts growing. I especially love the What We're Loving This Week section. So many good recommendations. Thank you for putting together such quality content every week. End quote. Well, thank you so much, you know who, except for that I don't actually know who, (laughs) for your review. And congratulations on your marriage this year. Your home and your family will be blessed by your heart and your desire to love and serve them well. And if you would like to leave us a comment, you can do so on our website, www.themodernlady1950.wordpress.com. Or you can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, where you can find us at The Modern Lady Podcast. But before we get into today's chat, Lindsay has our Modern Lady Tip of the Week. Okay, ladies, let's forget about our ugly and non-romantic cars and pretend that our sole mode of transportation is the horse and carriage. It is time for a little carriage etiquette. First of all, you should know that there is much opportunity to display your wealth in what is called your carriage dress. Be sure to select items with rich and vibrant colors for your dress and the wrap that would go over your shoulders and perhaps the blanket or rug that you would wear over your legs. I've read about, quote, a strange jumbling of orange silk, rich laces, and pearly silks being worn. But you should know that the Princess of Wales was known for her good taste and she would have never been caught dressing like that. She appeared in her carriage in a close-fitting suit of navy blue flannel. Now, this being said, one must not be overdressed in public and never make the error of being seen in your ball gown in public. Now, the place of honor is the seat facing the horses and the lady of the highest rank would sit on the right-hand side of the seat. 
Now the art of descending gracefully from a carriage is a mark of class and elegance. This was so important that the Empress of Austria invited three young princesses to court to look for a potential wife for her son, and she watched as each one of the three stepped down from the carriage. The eldest stepped on her dress and nearly fell. The youngest jumped down quickly and roughly, missing the step entirely. But the middle daughter stepped down, neither hurriedly nor too stiffly, but with grace and dignity. Now, much discussion has occurred about how you greet another driver as you pass each other. Do you lift your hand? Do you lift your hat? Do you lift the whip that is in your hand? Well, it was decided that lifting your whip might be a shock to the foreign visitor. So it was agreed that a gentle dip of the head in the direction of the driver opposite is the best custom. So Michelle, you know that the vast majority of my entertainment right now is set in the Victorian era. And I'm pretty sure I see and read about carriages more than I do cars right now. Aside from the horse excrement everywhere, I feel like it was probably a pretty efficient way to travel, especially when train travel helped out on the longer distances. Uh, do you know what? I don't think we need to throw all of those etiquette tips out the window. I mm-hmm. think even for our motorized carriages, <laughs> <laughs> learning proper dismounting <laughs> could yes. come in handy. <laughs> you know what? My mom did modeling lessons in high school and they had to learn how to do that, how to get out really? of the car properly. Yes. Okay. And there needs to also be like a subsection for mothers getting out of cars because (laughs) I can tell you the amount of things I'm trying to carry in one trip and get out of the car. I would not be a prime candidate for Princess of Austria. Let's just say. (laughs) As we embark into February, the wonder of Christmas and novelty of January behind us, the monotony of winter can begin to get tedious. But believe it or not, every day is still worth living, and what's more, we believe it's worth living well. What makes it even better is that you can start right here and right now, wherever you are and whatever season of life you're in. Right, Lindsay? Yes. So, Michelle, a little while ago, you told me about an Instagram account that you enjoy, and then I fell in love with it too, and it's called Chris Loves Julia. And Mm -hmm. they are a married couple, as you know, and they have a few kids and they're designers and they have the most beautiful home. Um, Mm -hmm. I saw people commenting under one of their most recent posts about, I think like a blog post they had written about that, you know, every day can be a special occasion. They're really encouraging their followers to break out the good stuff and to use it. Now, I did look around their blog this morning and I couldn't find it. So maybe it was a different type of post. But anyways, that idea of making today a special occasion just kept bouncing around in my head. Mm -hmm. So then you and I had our regular Monday phone call meeting and we kept tossing around ideas using the words like living well and today is a special occasion and elevate the ordinary and living a good life and everyday luxuries. And I think it goes without saying, Michelle, that for you and I, living well can mean a lot of different things, right? We can have some really Mm -hmm. like lofty and heavenly goals in that, but it also can just mean like feeling like it, like elevating our everyday habits or just little things we have to do. We can do those a little bit better as well. And so just back to that post on Chris Loves Julia. And I thought, what if we just decide that today is a special occasion, right? Like, what does that look Mm -hmm. like? And can I do that today? Mm -hmm. Well, even uh, St. Thomas Aquinas would agree with you right? He had that quote that said, sorrow can be alleviated by good sleep, a bath, and a Mm. glass of wine, right? So I feel like St. Thomas Aquinas, his goal was also heaven, but even he could see (laughs) how much better life could be with a bath and a glass of wine. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) There's a balance. (laughs) So what what do we mean, Michelle, when we say living well then? Mm -hmm. Well, I was looking up like actual definitions of live well Mm -hmm. (laughs) online earlier today. And for the most part, all of the websites that I was reading kind of hit on the same concept of a holistic approach where kind of all your priorities in the various aspects of your life, physical, psychological, spiritual, they're all kind of um, in line and in balance with one another. And I liked that definition. Mm -hmm. Um, And so from that, I think what I would say is like living well is like a a mindset that you have to just go about your life. It's one of contentedness with what you have. It's one of gratitude for what you have. And it's also, there was one part of a list that I sent you that talks Mm -hmm. about it. It requires effort and it's Mm -hmm. an action. So I think living well, um, 
how it was being defined on those websites was one thing. It was like a lifestyle. It was a characteristic of living. But I like actually taking it that step further and saying that living well is the actual act of seeking out those things in your day to day life and then enjoying them. Yeah. Intention and attitude, right? Like Mm -hmm. those things really underpin so many of the topics we talk about. And then we were talking about, okay, so let's say you can kind of grasp that you're living well. And we're like, okay, let's say you want to take it to the next step. So the next step would be like elevating the ordinary. We've talked before, we did a whole episode on the everyday beauty of ordinary life. And you and I are are romantics through and through, right? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) A little dramatic. Um, And so we talked a lot about (laughs) what it's like when you're walking up the stairs and you're wearing a skirt and you lift it and you pretend like suddenly it's 1870 or we carry things in our apron. So you're carrying um, potatoes in from the field. Yes. Yeah. We (laughs) we are characters in our own stories. We're really good at that. Um, So we can do that in our own heads. But what we're talking about here is like the actual intention, like you were just saying, about elevating the ordinary in our everyday lives. And so Mm -hmm. I Googled that then. And there was actually very little. Hmm. The one article I found was just about a woman who was creating uh, flower arrangements in her house. And she said that, you know, this action of elevating the ordinary is for joy alone. And I loved that. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't, Mm -hmm. we don't have to overcomplicate it. Like it just brings us joy. Um, and that it really contributes to a creative life, right? And you and I are both creative people. We hunger for that. We'll look for it in whatever Mm -hmm. area we can get in our lives. So, um, yeah, so we have, you know, living well, elevating the ordinary, And then we thought, well, what does that look like? Well, there can be everyday luxuries, like how you were defining luxury in the opening, right? Mm -hmm. Years ago, I made a little list for myself of the things I use every single day and how I could make those very basic things just a little bit more luxurious. And it was things Mm -hmm. like my toothbrush, a hairbrush. I still haven't bought all fancier versions of these things, but like I always wanted the hairbrush that's like the big, um, I go with the boar's bristles, like a classic hairbrush, you know? Mm -hmm. The kind that Audrey Hepburn would brush her hair with, right? Yes, yes. I'm just thinking of those black and white movies, those hairbrushes. And with the Mm -hmm. matching mirror. I mean, not maybe not a silver one, but just something where I think every time I pick up that hairbrush, I want to like picking it up. Like I want that little Mm -hmm. thing to be right down to our coffee. I mean, there's so many different ways to make coffee right now, right? So many Mm -hmm. different ways that involve a lot more processes and time. And that's a little bit of a luxury. So anyways, I was, I really started to look at my own life and think about how I can elevate the ordinary through some everyday luxuries. Yes. And like what you were saying, uh, a flair for the dramatic certainly (laughs) does lend itself well to this exercise. (laughs) Yes. I can, I can totally say that too. And I think having said that, you don't have to be someone who is quite as dramatic as maybe you or I. (laughs) And that's why I liked your definition of like, it's just for the joy of it. Right. So it truly is. um, It ties back to the self-awareness episode again Mm -hmm. right it's like what do you find what when you have it either in your hands or in your line of sight or to have to eat do you think "Ooh, this Mm -hmm. is a treat Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that right and then how can you work it in to your own life it's going to look so different from person to person but I think that kind of joy that's what's contagious when people see someone who lives with that kind of Uh, tenacity for life. Yeah. And what we think is that that kind of joy is attainable today, regardless if you're Mm -hmm. in a lockdown or whatever situation you're in. And that um, although it does take effort, it doesn't necessarily have to cost anything, right? And you don't have to change your whole life around. So one of the first areas like this that I think most of us have a lot of very strong feelings about (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. is dinner time. (laughs) Right. And dinnerware. And Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us have strong feelings about this because I posted this on Facebook this morning about um, if people have special occasion dinnerware that they have stored away or that they use. And I wanted to know how they felt about it. Did they register for for it when they got married? Did they get stuff handed down from their grandparents? Uh, Is it in a box in their basement? Well, Michelle, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the comments were flooding in. (laughs) Women have some very (laughs) strong thoughts and opinions on special occasion dinnerware. One of my friends, Bronwyn, commented on the post, and she said that during the COVID lockdowns, 
she actually was inspired to break out the good china. Now, Bronwyn has mm. four young kids and they had, you know, of course, a few special occasions that popped up over this last year, but they also started doing fancy dress up dinners in her house. And she also pointed oh, out something else. Yes. Isn't that so sweet? Yes. Um, she realized that right before the lockdowns, she had purchased for her kids, just like in their regular clothing shopping, a few nicer things that they would have probably worn to some special occasions mm -hmm. over the year before all of those things got canceled. And so she thought, well, I don't want to waste these nicer clothes I bought for my kids. I want to be able to get some use out of them. So they started hosting these fancy dinners in her house. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm totally going to borrow that. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. steal Bronwyn, but <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be borrowing that. I love that because I felt... I felt the same way too. This is in particular about um, suits for my boys, yes. right? Because like how often do little boys get to wear suits these days yeah. and you're going to grow out of it before you get any kind of value or use out of it. So I like the idea of bringing it right back into the home though and using it to elevate just your, your dinner time with your family. Absolutely. So once we've kind of asked ourselves these questions or if you've just always had kind of a sense of what you like and what you'd like to implement in your house, then kind of comes the avalanche of like doubt <laughs> or second guessing or reasons why this isn't a great idea or reasons why I can't right now. But we're here to debunk all, all those things. Right, Lindsay? That's right, Michelle. You said it so much more nicely than I would because in my notes, it just says no more excuses. Um, because that's <laughs> Lindsay's that's, done. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's how I approach things. So <laughs> I wrote excuses and I'm not writing them in everybody else's voice. They're my own voice. So I'll just let you guys know that these are some of my excuses <laughs> for why I am, mm -hmm. you know, thinking, well, I can't add these little luxuries into my life right now. Like for instance, we're in a lockdown. <laughs> I can't mm -hmm. go out and shop at HomeSense or any of our stores right now to replace some of the, um, the things that I'd like to make a little nicer in my life. Um, so yeah, Michelle, we're in a lockdown. So so uh, it's not going to work for me. Oh, but I, I know, but I, I see it as even more of a reason mm. to indulge in these luxuries or to make it more like everyday luxurious, we'll say. For example, one thing that we've done with this, you know, whole idea of elevating the ordinary during lockdown is actually not to go all out every day. Mm. Um, in terms of like the, like a fancy dinner or, you know, lighting the candles or, playing a record while we eat or clean up or something like that we've actually been saving it for the weekends mm -hmm. and then when we're at the weekend we spare little expense in terms of time energy and fancy items from the home and so it's become for us something to look forward to in spite of being locked down in our homes so yeah. we know that it's coming up right but uh, it gives us a little something to look forward to and it's a nice little treat I love the anticipation, right? There's that saying that mm -hmm. like planning the trip is sometimes more exciting than the actual trip. I love yeah. anticipation. <laughs> Me like, too. I'll, just like you and I love our new beginnings. I'll think of anything that we can anticipate. <laughs> when I was a kid, when, well, when I was a teenager, I started to get too old. My mom would just start asking me like, can you give me ideas of what you want for Christmas? And I'm like, mm. no, I like to be surprised. Mm -hmm. I like wondering about what it is. <laughs> so yeah, is, totally yes. with you in anticipation. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, that does add a new feeling to it. So yeah, we're starting to really enjoy our weekends as well. And so I love that idea. So Michelle, but we don't have any extra mm -hmm. money to spend. I can't do extra mm -hmm. luxuries right now. Like we are, you know, cash strapped. So what do we do? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this won't work right now. Our thrift stores are closed at mm -hmm. the moment, but they were open for a brief window of time this summer. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say they're amazing, right? Like, um, I know I shared a post a couple of months ago when I went to the store and I, I know that we ha are starting to lose our wedding wine glasses, the ones that yeah. we got for our wedding. They are, we're down, we were down to like three. <laughs> yeah. And I came across this beautiful set of crystal. They were like heavy wine glasses and they are, were just gorgeous. And there was a full set of them, but I was hemming and hawing about mm -hmm. whether I wanted them. And an older couple from our church stopped by and they recognized me and we were chatting and they were both like, oh my goodness, buy it. We'll all be together again someday. Right. Aww. And I was like, 
I love that. And then I bought them and now they're my favorite thing ever. And even Phil says like, this is the best thrift store purchase ever. So you can find things like that there. I bought aperitif glasses before Mm -hmm. Christmas and yet they're, they can be a treasure trove if you have a good thrift store and are are patient in finding the, the right set. There's another thing too. So many of us are doing like a big home purge right now. And so our local buy nothing Mm -hmm. Facebook groups, right? Or your local neighborhood buy and sell group there, especially with COVID people are, a lot of people are just foregoing, you know, making the $5 on whatever and just going, Oh no, you can have it. I'm leaving it on the porch. I'm seeing a lot of people just um, saying, you know, porch pickup for whatever items as they get rid of them in their homes. And a Mm -hmm. lot of those things, like I, I, that's how I got my punch bowl and it was free Mm -hmm. on our, on our local Facebook group. I'm like a brand new cut glass like punch bowl with all the cups and the ladle. Um, so there are some of those things that some of the other ladies might not be interested, in, but we know that us modern ladies who like this podcast are the things that we're really interested in these hostessing items and stuff. So you can mm. always put it on your, your group too. I know that we can say, you know, if anybody's looking to get rid of, and so many times people will say, you can just have it for free, like just come grab it. Wow. Another thing too, that I forget about all the time is that you can shop your own house. <laughs> And Mm -hmm. move things around different rooms. Sometimes things look completely different in a completely different setting. The lighting is different. The function of the room is different. And so you can really breathe a lot of new life into items you already have. And, you know, if the stores are closed where you are, like they are here for us right now, uh, that could be such, that could be also a great creative exercise too. That can be an immediate breath of life into um, a space that you, you need to elevate it a little bit. Okay, Michelle, I don't want to break anything. You know, I have all that heirloom china in boxes and I know I'm a bull in a china shop. I'm going to break it or I don't want my kids to break anything. So forget it. It's just not the right season in my life. I'm going to leave it all in boxes. Yeah. You know what? We, um, I remember growing up, my mom never put any of her stuff away. Mm -hmm. My grandmother as well never put things away when we came to visit. We were definitely taught to be how to be around those things Mm -hmm. and you know, how to be aware of them and how to act differently. Like the living room is not the place to be roughhousing yeah. because that's where mom's nice things are. <laughs> yep. There's a there's a basement or a backyard or the front yard for that type of thing. Uh, so it's teachable. Like having said that, kids will be kids. Uh, accidents may happen. You know, it isn't a guarantee necessarily, but I and so I do understand the fear of something getting broken, especially if it's really valuable. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, I do think sometimes we might err a little bit too far on the side of caution and never, ever take out the pretty, beautiful yeah. things that yeah. we were given or that we have out of fear. You know, they might, the kids might like to see it too. You never know. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I, I am more guilty of breaking things in our house than any, like the other five people in this house oh. put together. <laughs> I Do you know that's probably everything. true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For me as um, well. So I know that within myself, I need to cultivate gentleness, right? And I've talked about this before mm. in my, all of my actions and speech um, and that my kids need to learn that too. And I, and I have to remind myself, like they won't learn how to hold a piece of glass. If they're always drinking out of the plastic Ikea cups, uh, they're not mm-hmm. going to know how to drink out of a, a glass cup until they're, until you deem that they're old enough to use one. They can learn how to use that stuff and you mm-hmm. learn how to use a butter knife, right? Like these things. So anyways, it does take practice and it does make for a few tense dinners. The first time you have all of that stuff out, like I hold mm-hmm. my breath when I put my um, soft blue linen napkins out and I'm like oh please don't actually and I do this even with adult guests I'm like please don't wipe your mouth with it <laughs> although that's why a napkin is there um, I was just gonna but, say. right I mean that's why it's there I get it people but no it's like oh tomato sauce right okay it's gonna go on that's fine um so it, it's an exercise for us in relaxing that part of ourselves mm-hmm. and it's an exercise in our children to learn how to use those things and no one can learn any of those lessons if we just keep everything packed away Mm-hmm. That's such a good point about the glasses too. Mm-hmm. Now, um, much like our wine glasses, we're down to three everyday yeah. glass cups. And so yeah. unfortunately, our youngest has to drink out of a tiny mason jar. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's glass. She's learning yeah. how to handle glass. It's it's all good. It's luxurious 
to her. And that's really the spirit of this entire episode. Continue. Now, <laughs> I do have a tip, though. So from my years at Pier 1, okay. and I might have said this on another episode, but when I would sell people a set of stemware or dinnerware, I always made them buy um, one more. like and, and So it was an odd number, which people are like, mm. you're just trying to upsell me. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Because when you break one, you're going to be really glad that you have a set of six then. So if you buy seven wine glasses, mm. then you'll have your set of six. And I always made myself do that as well. And I can't tell you how many times I've been really thankful that I've broken some, like, and then realized I still have mm. the full set because I bought that one extra one. That's such a good idea. Okay. So here's my next excuse. So let's say fine, we're using the dinnerware and that's all great. And then we're dressing everybody up, right? We were talking about dressing up a little bit nicer for some of these special occasions during lockdown. But Michelle, I ate a lot of carbs over the last year and I don't fit in my <laughs> fancy clothes right now. So I'm like, no, forget mm. it. I can only squeeze into leggings and I only own two pairs of leggings and one of them has a hole in it. So I'm not looking the classiest. And so I'm, I'm whining about that a lot to myself. No, forget it. I can't elevate that because I don't fit in anything. Oh yes. Um, lockdown has, uh, presented quite a lot of challenges, eh? For upkeep to our <laughs> <Yes>. appearances. <Yes. laughs> for example, I just posted this morning on Instagram that I've had to learn how to cut my own hair. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's short it's short in the back right and so yeah. if I leave it for several months it's not like my hair just gets longer it's the layers get long and kind of shaggy looking mm -hmm. and so it drove me to YouTube the internet said not to do it but I was desperate <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's gone well it's gone fine and no one can see me anyways because we're not allowed to see people so um, but what I think uh, what I think this challenge probably pre presents is mm. to still be mindful of how we look and this can right. come in any kind of shape or form we've seen still a lot of people on instagram and facebook and everyone really upping their game in terms of makeup right, right? or really experimenting with different colors or different palettes you know mm. throwing on a scarf when maybe they don't really use a scarf or you know or the uh, nails all these... i've seen a lot of nails yes yes yeah. so like while we may think that like there's no point yeah. um, because we can't go anywhere and nobody else can see us, what can you do for you right now that's going to yeah. elevate and feel just a little bit special, make you yourself feel a little bit special and a little bit luxurious? Yeah, that's a really good point. And I know that for me to like, I, you know, making the decision to get healthier again is one of definitely the decisions I can make. And so mm. I can do that, but you're right in that it's really hard to even focus on doing that if you're just feeling really glum about yourself and how you're looking. Right. So you're mm. right. Just taking one step. So I know I've been doing a little bit more makeup lately and just doing things like eyeliner and things I haven't done in a long time. And yeah, I feel a little bit better about myself. So that is definitely a good step in the right direction. Another thing I was just reading actually was something that I think we've talked about before. I'm not sure if it was on the podcast or off on the side, but uh, of trying to find your signature scent. Mm, yes. Right. And someone was just writing about it like the other day and I thought, oh my goodness, yes, I would love to do that, to find that scent that reminds other people of me, like your family yeah. members or your kids. And this might be uh, an interesting time. Now, I, I know that's probably hard to come by, especially those little samples that you used to get like at the mm -hmm. mall or something <laughs> in those gift bags. But if you have like the opportunity or you have a bag of scents that you never tried out before that could be something fun mm -hmm. it would be something fun and you can walk around your house and um just don't say anything and see what the people in your house say about it you might find your scent yes. in the middle of lockdown <laughs> who knows <laughs> so the last excuse i'm making for myself is that you know a lot of times we are just in survival mode right now and i think about like oh upping the everyday luxuries or trying to live well well i'm just trying to live like i don't have the extra energy right now, um, physically or mentally to try to like do anything more on top of our other, of our regular stuff, mm -hmm. Michelle. Yeah. But I think that's, that's the best part. Like what mm. we're saying. Um, I don't think you have to have extra energy. Mm. In fact, um, I think it really is just about looking around to see what you already have and either reorganizing it in a new and beautiful way that seems mm. extra special to you or putting those things that you already have to good use. I think it might be less a question of extra energy and maybe more a question of just giving ourselves permission to enjoy oh. what we already have. 
Oh, I love that. It is, again, it's just a change of mindset, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. yeah, we said earlier, it, it takes effort to do this, to live well, right? That was yeah. in one of the earlier descriptions. But um, I firmly believe that these types of efforts end up being life-giving. So yeah, it might take that energy, but that these things always, that energy is multiplied and it does come back to you. Like it feels so good. We know this Mm -hmm. when we put a little extra effort into how we look, into how we've, you know, done, done dinner and set the table and all those kinds of things. So I know because I am really hard to get motivated, but once I start working, I, you can't stop me, but it's really hard Mm -hmm. for me to do the first thing. So I can speak from experience that if you just go, I'm going to do this right now, I'm going to start with this one thing. Um, Yeah. I actually think that this effort isn't an energy drain, it's energy giving. Mm -hmm. All right. So when we were having our little pre-episode meeting, we couldn't help but reminisce about our grandmothers and just the, you know, the women that they were and the lives that they led. And they seem to do all of these things so effortlessly. Mm -hmm. We're just looking at this as a generational thing. And you know what, Michelle, there were, well, I guess my notes get really serious here. I'm like, I'm like wars, economic depressions, serious diseases, <laughs> uh, lots of children that they were looking after. Um, okay. So <laughs> I guess it's never been easy, but I do right. think that we can look back and, and really, we really can value and respect and admire the effort that the women who have gone before us, that they put into it, even when they didn't have the best quality things, even when they had, you know, these tiny little wartime houses, they just really worked hard at it. Um, I remember whenever my parents would have a dinner party, which was very rare. My mom wasn't very much a dinner party person, but she would fold their Mm -hmm. cloth napkins. They were black. They were so eighties to have classy black napkins and they were folded into a fan, right? And she would set them inside the wine glass fan. And I thought it was the absolute height of luxury (laughs) to the eyes of a child. Yeah. And they really knew, uh, what things they had had value and then they used them very appropriately like in all situations. And like you said, effortlessly. I think that's one thing that I notice about um, our mother's generation and our, certainly our grandmother's generation. There didn't seem to be um, as much maybe angst about this. (laughs) I don't think that they gave it a second thought. No, no. Like, I don't think they could have filled an hour long podcast talking about this. <laughs> the Do way you know, we can. Yeah. My grandmother, who's still alive, mind you, I, my she's my favorite human in the whole world. Um, she, you know, they had they lived out in the country. She had three boys. It was her and just men. And you'd think that, you just think that it would be at the bottom of her list to, you know, do herself up every day. But she had in her room an actual like movie star vanity table that my grandfather built for her with the big mirror with the lights all the way around it. And she had then Mm. all of the pretty bottles and everything was expert. Like all the lipsticks were lined up and the pretty powder with the puff, you know, like the big one that you do on your neck and, and your chest, like those things, Mm. like they just had those things. And yeah, I feel like we're so self-conscious about, yeah, we're way overthinking it. It was just a beautiful part of their routine in their life. Mm -hmm. So what I particularly love about us being modern ladies, right? Because we can reminisce about our grandmas Mm -hmm. and and all of that stuff, but we aren't playing dress up, right? We aren't just playing Mm -hmm. house. We aren't just trying to somehow recapture the life our grandmothers had, no matter how much we admire it or no matter how nostalgic it is. Um, sure we can, you know, put on winged eyeliner and put on our pearls and set out the good China and that's all wonderful. But I think there's so much more for it for us as, as modern ladies that our grandmothers weren't privy to, like they did. Mm -hmm. We have this great opportunity to really examine what a living, a well-lived life or elevating our ordinary looks like for us on the individual, Mm -hmm. because we have access to the internet. So if there's ever, and this, this to me, to you and I means like, again, leisure time or hobbies, like it's so much more than just putting on your makeup and setting a nice table. Because while you and I talk all the time about how um, it's our vocation to serve and to serve with joy and to serve charitably and to do all those things that's not necessarily always going to elevate our daily life. And that's more so what we want to talk about here, right? Like what's what is mm-hmm. the simple things that will bring us joy as well. 
Yes, I love that. And it's been so interesting seeing how this exercise and seeking out the everyday luxuries of life is now being kind of passed on Mm. through to the children, like through to their generation, how they're either perceiving us practicing it for ourselves, and then how they're kind of trying to experiment with it on their own too. Mm -hmm. Again, I posted on Instagram a couple months ago about flavored, flavored ice cubes. Mm -hmm. This was something my kids took really great delight in doing. (laughs) And all it was, was they would make ice cubes in the morning and they would take turns choosing which flavored, those flavored drops, you know, we call them Mm -hmm. magic water because it makes your water water magical. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Those little flavored drops in and it changes the color and then they freeze it. And then we get to pop them out at dinner time and add it to our water glasses And with the candles on and through the glasses, it kind of creates this really cool ambiance and it's Mm. special. It's a luxury to them. Like how often do we don't often have ice in our water. And then the other thing, too, is this is more of a Phil thing. He has the patience for this. But (laughs) on the weekends when he cooks, um, he's been taking he's been giving over the plating of the raw cut vegetables over Mm. to Claire. And she has come up with some really interesting we'll say (laughs) arrangements (laughs) where she tries to emulate the plating that she sees from the shows that we watch or from what Mm -hmm. phil and i try to do to plate our dinners in a new elegant way in an elevated way and she'll add a little uh, a sauce an experimental sauce on the side we've had carrot sticks with plum sauce that was interesting one night (laughs) um but through the eyes of a kid and this was your your point right yeah the everyday luxury isn't even so much about luxury as we adults see it it's Mm. almost like adding back wonder into your everyday life and to me that excites me more than anything else Yeah. And it comes back to the joy again. So if it's simply about joy for you, so if your kids, they are watching everything we're doing, right? So if you Mm -hmm. have spent a little bit of extra time putting on makeup and I, like my daughters, even though my teenager does not like makeup, like I do, and I'm the type of mom's like, why aren't you wearing makeup? You should wear some makeup. Not because I think she needs it because I think it's so much fun (laughs) and I want to do it with her. And she's like, mom, I'm naturally beautiful. I don't need, I'm like, what, where did you get that confidence? (laughs) It's so fantastic. But anyways, my youngest daughter is all about sitting beside me and watching me put on my makeup. It's these little things where they're watching us. And if we do it with joy, right? So if we've just kind of upped our game a little bit, um, her kids really do love, they do watch with wonder those things. They really do enjoy it. And that was, that is what I took away from watching my grandmother and my mother doing these things. So again, you're talking about children and the impact that having some beautiful things or things that we use every day, but kind of elevating them or having them as little luxuries. Well, longtime listener and friend of the podcast, Louise wrote to me and she shared this. She said, I have my silverware from Burke's. Now, just for those of you who don't know, Burke's is kind of like Canada's Tiffany's. She said, my Mm -hmm. dad was so happy to have a daughter to share this tradition with. When I turned 12, I got my first piece. I think it was a teaspoon. He and I went to Burke's at Bayshore, and I felt like a princess in that store. We went to the area where they displayed their silver settings, and he said, every young lady should have nice silver to set their table with. He pointed a few patterns he liked, and I showed him the pattern I really liked, and then we found one we both liked. So for each special occasion for the next 12 years, I got a piece of silver. And when it was all finished, I told my dad I really wanted a wooden silverware box to keep it all in, and I recall the joy of picking that out with him too. Now, I only use the silver once or twice a year, and it is a lot of work because it's hand wash only, but I'm so glad that I have it. It's a special tradition my dad passed on to me from his generation. And I love that so much because it was her father, Mm. right? So here we are talking all about mothers and grandmothers and all this stuff. But just knowing that our husbands and our sons are watching too, and that this isn't just a feminine thing to like a Mm well-set table or to like grooming or any of these little luxuries. (laughs) Our husbands like it too. And so they notice it. And I just really, that really struck me that that was a father-daughter tradition. And I think I'm telling Jason now to start collecting silverware with our daughters. Yes. So speaking about gifts, that actually got me thinking about the gifts that we receive. You know, those candles that you don't light, the chocolates that we don't eat. Um, And as a gift giver, I think I'd be... I'd be really sad to know that someone has not used the gift that I've given them because they're saving it, 
right? Wait, people and... don't eat the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have uneaten chocolate I've... in your house? <laughs> it's a mistake I have only made a few times in okay. my life. But if it comes, like, if it's a special kind, like mm-hmm. kinds that I don't I don't often get or I am i don't know if I will ever get again, yeah. I will be, uh, I will feel a little bit loath to open it and yeah. to eat it because then it will be gone. And it has happened again once (laughs) maybe Mm -hmm. twice where then the chocolate has um kind of gotten a bit stale to enjoy right or that bottle of wine disappointing yeah right like that bottle of champagne or sparkling wine too that people give you and it just sits there forever waiting for a special occasion that's right and then you don't get to enjoy it as the gift Mm -hmm. recipient and that's sad too so no one wins really, when you sit on those special gifts or even the sentimental items that have been passed on to you. You know, we can look at our homes and our time in them as something to be endured, and it will be tedious and monotonous. But imagine what could happen today if we let the creative, the romantic, the warm-hearted in us loose in our homes. We can live every day truly like the special occasion that it is. And if you think about it, the most important people you could ever hope to be serving today are already right here. Okay, it's time for our What We're Loving This Week segment of the show. So Lindsay, what have you been loving this week? There's a podcast that I'm really enjoying, but it might be a little controversial for some people, but I'm okay with that. Um, It's a really good conversation starter, and it's called The Suzanne Venker Show, and I've shared it once or twice on Instagram, Um, but she Mm. is on Instagram at Suzanne Venker Author, and she's really starting to get a following. So she's an author and a marriage coach, and I don't actually think she's religious at all, yet she does seem to hold traditional values. But anyway, she's really bold. She tells it like it is. She's got great guests on the show, like really good ones. You'll recognize Mm -hmm. some of the names. And I have learned so much about marriage. I'm just saying like, had I heard her show when I was dating Jason and when we first got married, I really think it would have saved us years of anguish because while she's a woman talking to women, there is so much for, you know, husbands and wives on it. And it's just been fascinating. There, I I don't say this in a, in a, cocky way, but there's a lot of times I listen to things. I'm like, yeah, that's not new information. I've read that in a book before, you know, whatever listening Mm. to hers. I'm like, I never heard that before. I never heard that before. Oh my goodness. You've totally opened my eyes about that. So really great information. And I, I feel like it's not one I can listen to all the time for pleasure. So I have to be in the mood Mm. to get like basically a talking to about marriage. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But when I'm in that mood, it's my go-to podcast. So again, it's the Suzanne Venker show with a V, V V-E-N-K-E-R. Oh, very cool. Now I've listened to one of those, right? Like you Mm -hmm. told me to listen to one of the episodes and I really liked it too. So, okay. I'm going to get back into it as well. Yeah. If, you know, if we're all about being self-aware and wanting to grow, Mm. it's the perfect (laughs) podcast for that. (laughs) So what have you been loving this week, Michelle? So this weekend we watched uh, another delightful movie that I'm happy to recommend. And this Mm. one is called The Hundred Foot Journey. Have you seen this one being advertised? Okay, I think you'd love this. It stars Helen Mirren, who is wonderful in it. She's so good. Um, The movie follows an Indian family who moved to France, and they end up living and setting up a restaurant across the street from a Michelin star French restaurant. Cool. (laughs) Oh, it's awesome. Um, And then this movie follows the professional rivalry between the two and digs into a little bit of their personal lives and how they they end up interacting with one another, completely different cultures. Um, So the heart of the movie was so warm. It's very sweet. And then you know how we feel about movies and TV shows about food. Mm -hmm. And this one's going to make you want to cook both French food and Indian food for dinner at the same time. Yes. And I also just really love the aesthetic, you know, from the color to the sets to the landscape. It, currently outside of our windows, Lindsay, it's snowy and gray. Mm-hmm. Um, but the 100 foot journey is an explosion of color and fun and food. And it's the best kind of entertainment, if you ask me. Okay, that's going to do it for us this week. And if you want to get in touch and chat with us about our topic today, you can find us on our website 
www.themodernlady1950.wordpress.com or leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Modern Lady Podcast. I'm Michelle Sachs, and you can find me on Instagram at MM Sachs. And I'm Lindsay Murray, and you can find me on Instagram at Lindsay Hellmaker. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great week, and we will see you next time.